Hello, Paul Hamilton here. Really excited. We're going to have a look at here, Scratch. We're going to look at Scratch Junior, and we're looking at Scratch Junior today as an application to get our young, quite our young students, very young students, to start to digital storytell and, and actually learn a few coding skills along the way, which is, um, I think, really, really beneficial. So I'm going to talk you through this and how I would do it with young students um, because I think the pedagogy behind it is really, really important. So um, do a little bit of a Simon Says with your preps. Have this mirrored on the board and say, okay, everyone do what I'm going to do just to get them started and all on the same page. So get them to press plus, new project. Talk to them a little bit about how we can move the cat with our finger on our iPad. And the first thing that comes up are these blue um, coding blocks. That's what we really want to focus on in the side. So talk to your kids about your, you can actually drag the blocks down, but we need to join them. And then get the kids to actually press on the blue and see what it does. And then show them just a really quick example of that and also show them that you can actually flick your pieces away as well and get them really just exploring. Don't, don't teach them too much. Just let them explore the blue blocks and get them to, to show you what they actually can do. And then just send them away for five or 10 minutes and let them play with the blue blocks, but really have those strong parameters there. Because I think if you just let them go loose with all the blocks, they're gonna get frustrated and they're not gonna know what to do. So let, first task for them to do is independent play, get them to get on the blue blocks and just have a little bit of a play and let them learn independently. And what that's teaching them is, is that it's not the teacher that's doing the thinking for them. It's not the teacher that's telling them, it's the students themselves that are exploring. But we really need some parameters in there. Um, so what we're going to actually do um, after we've allowed our students to explore that concept of, of moving, we're going to give a little bit of a, a storytelling scenario. So what we're going to do there, um, I'm going to go press the home button. I'm going to start again. I'm going to move my cat. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag in a background. So this is a new block that we're going to teach our kids to do. So at the top here, we've got our little um, setting the scene. Teach your kids to bring in a scene. I'm going to bring in a, uh, let's go with a bit of a park theme. When I press the park or fall, then I need to press the ticky box. Our kids will get good, of it, good at that. And all of a sudden, we've got our little cat here that's got a background and a setting the scene. So we can start getting our students to do a little bit of storytelling. And what we can actually do is I'm going to move my cat up a little bit here. And I'm going to have him walking over to the house. Remember, these are very young students. So this is where we can get them to say, okay, um, guys, I want you to see if you can get your cat to move right over to the house. Now, some kids will do it this way and bring the blocks over. I'll move my cat up a little bit just so we can see. And I'll press the first block. And this is where we can do some really good estimating and bring in some maths as well. So I might bring in an, uh, another four or so and bring that back and just see how that goes. Now, some of your students really at a young age will actually learn that we can actually put the numbers in. And this is where we can get our kids. If I press that once, the one, I could say, Can't bring that to nine, bring that back. And when I press it, it moves nine of those blocks, um, which is fantastic. Um, so we can get our kids doing that. I'll go back to one. Okay, and we can allow our kids to start changing in different directions. So we might bring in, uh, I don't know, nine of those, and then we might get him to go in a different direction for five as well. The other thing that I really like to do is if I press my yellow one here, I can bring in the um, green flag. And I'll tell you what that does. Basically now, see where that cat is starting. When I press the actual green flag, it will move that distance. So it goes across and down, which is fantastic. If I press it green again, it'll do it again. But if I press the green flag at the top here, it'll stick with where it starts. So if I press the green, it'll go across and down. And if I press the green again, it'll go back to starting where it originally started. And I think that's a really good habit to get our kids into is bringing in that green flag, bringing in the directions and getting them to do a little bit of a story as you go along. So you could get our kids to actually um, verbally explain what the cat is doing 
and so on. In future um, tutorials here, we're going to actually explore some of the other blocks. But for this initial one, for the first lesson, I think it's really good to get kids exploring the movement in regard to going different directions. And look, give them little challenges with their storytelling. Bring up a different scenario and allow students to really explore the different directions and get them to problem solve. What we don't want to do is we don't want to take over the kid's iPad. So if a student comes up to you and says, I don't know how to get my cat to the house, um, talk them through it by all means, but get them to communicate what they need to do by the blocks. The last thing we want to do is take over the student's um, iPads because it really de um, devalues what they're doing and takes a bit of power away from them. So that's a really quick tutorial, getting kids to do some digital storytelling through movement, through coding. And we're going to introduce some of these other blocks. You can definitely have a play around with them. But once again, if I was introducing Scratch Junior to my very, very young students, my prep or year one students, I'd really have some strong parameters and say, okay, today we're really exploring the blue blocks. Don't leave it totally open because that what happens then is, um, once again, they get off, off tangents. And there's some different things there. We can play around with backgrounds. We can play around with different sprites. And I'm going to do some future tutorials on this. But today, it's all about moving, getting our students to talk through as the cat is moving to tell a story at the same time. Um, and then we'll explore some different scenes and different things we can do in Scratch Junior. So there's a quick tutorial getting our very, very young students to do some directional movement with coding, but also get them to tell the story at the same time. Paul Hamilton here, signing off.